Hello, Chart Watchers and Decision Point Faithful. Welcome to this Thursday morning, August 6th, 2020 Decision Point Show. We are recording this as of Wednesday evening. You have your hosts here, Carl and Aaron Swenlin. And again, if, for those of you joining us for the first time today, we do welcome you to the show and we do hope that we see you back next week. And let's go ahead and look at our agenda, but how are you doing, uh, Dad? Oh, uh, good. You know, I, I heard a, uh, the other day something about the Boeing, how their 737 is getting closer to recertification by the FAA. And I thought, gee, just what the airlines need, more airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> good point. Well, hopefully we're going to see things turn around, but uh, I don't think the airlines' uh, balance sheets aren't going to turn around for a while, though. Nope. All right. Oh, we're going to start uh, with talking about the gap resistance on the S&P 500 and how that has been overcome. I do see some negative divergences that I know uh, Carl and I want to talk about to you just for you to be aware. We are going to discuss gold sentiment and gold, of course, uh, certainly a bright spot in the market these days, glittering, if you will. I'm going to look at the industrial sector, and then we will cover the diamond of the week. I have a new one. I gave out one on Monday for your daily five. You can find that on YouTube on the Stock Charts TV YouTube channel. All right, well, let's get us started. First of all, I want to let everybody know that next week we are moving our show. We are going to move from what you're watching right now, Thursday mornings. We're gonna start on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So you'll be able to catch us right after the market has closed and you can check out what our decision point charts are saying at that time. Another announcement is we are announcing rate increases for our products right now. They're very successful. And I find that especially with the decision point diamonds, I'm putting in a lot of extra time and I have streamlined that particular product quite a bit. So just so you know, if you wanna try these out, uh, this would be the time to do so. And also if you wanna get in for a, an annual, you do get two free months uh, based on that price. So uh, at this point, yo, you might wanna go check these uh, prices out because they will be going up significantly. And I do want to just uh, tell you a little bit about the changes in the Decision Point Diamonds. We will be adding a live trading room on Friday mornings, and I'm calling it my Decision Point Diamond of mine. And you can go in there. We'll take a look at the diamonds from the past. We'll start talking about maybe diamonds for the upcoming week. So you get that in addition to your diamonds subscription. All of my diamonds subscribers will have that. And then we will be starting a free one hour trading room on uh, Tuesday mornings, I think is when I chose. And so we will uh, have that time for all of you who maybe aren't subscribers, but just to get a, a little bit more feel for what we do here at Decision Point. So enough said, let's go ahead and move on. Decision Point scoreboards. We did get in a new PMO buy signal on the S&P 100 today. Yesterday, the S&P 500 had its PMO have a positive crossover, its signal line. So we got a buy signal there. Um, we're still waiting on a few. Uh, the NASDAQ hasn't uh, gotten its in, and we don't have one for the Dow just yet, but we know both of those two indexes uh, really had a great day today. I suspect these charts are looking a lot better. Looking at the decision point scoreboard, at this point, we can see that the only sell signal in the intermediate term, and that means that the 20-day EMA is below the 50-day EMA, and that would be energy. Uh, we also are looking at a couple of long-term trend model um, sell signals. That is when your 50-day EMA is below the 200-day EMA. It's had a death cross, if you will. And right now, energy, financials, industrials, real estate, and utilities are all sitting with sell signals right now on their charts. But I know some of these are starting to show improvement. And as I mentioned, I'll be looking particularly at XLI, the industrials, later on in the program. All right, time to go look at some charts. So let's get it going here. All right, I thought it would be uh, probably best to start off with our one year daily chart for the SPY. 
this chart, we cover this one every day in our decision point alert among many, many others. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to point out especially was the fact that we did finally get that breakout above the uh, gap resistance area. And this has been kind of a difficult place. You can see that the market really spent a lot of time, let me get this off, spent a lot of time trying to get through this. And now we're seeing that push. I was worried about an island formation here, a reverse island. Uh, turns out I think this is gonna be your breakaway gap. So we'll have to see if we can keep things running to the upside, but there are those negative divergences out there that, that are a bit of a problem for me. Eric, mm -hmm. I wanted to point out here, you, you had a PMO buy for OEX. Mm -hmm. SP 100, and, and I'm sure that the PMO probably looks something like this. You can see it really well in the thumbnail, but notice how flat it is on the one-year uh, version of the chart, and it's just, it's flat, so it could be zigging up and down there without much uh, result. Yes. The Very good. Is, but it is, it is setting up a, uh, what is it, 2.14, which is bullish it's a uh, bullish uh, kind of overbought level but it's flat so that means that strength is just steady mm -hmm. yeah we'll usually see these flat pmos when, when your acceleration is either very very um uh you're not getting more acceleration so you're getting a very steady rising trend the pmo will flatten for that and then you'll also see it flatten of course if we're you know sitting in a, a consolidation phase all right. Uh, one of the things I did note is we continue to see the volume below average. And of course, we do our volume over the year uh, so of the of trading days. And right now, we're, we're really well below that line. Uh, you can see, though, that this has been really the case for most of July. So I'm not really sure what to make of this. I don't think that I've been really concerned about it, that we're getting these moves to the upside and we're not seeing the kind of volume that I would like to see in addition to. But really, the, the whole month of July, we've been looking at some pretty low volume numbers in comparison yeah. to it's, the average. It's, it's uh, about 90% of uh, the one year average. So it's not, not horrible. Right. You can't complain about it. No, exactly. That's what I'm finding. So um, I want to point out on the VIX, we do invert it, and that gives us overbought on the top and oversold on the bottom. And you can see the VIX is still staying above that moving average on the inverted scale. And when that happens, you're usually going to be experiencing some, um, you know, we, we talk about bullish bias. Uh, and, and you can see that when sentiment is kind of, uh, you know, doing pretty well, the VIX is above that moving average, tends to be good for the market. So I like that I'm seeing that. I was surprised we haven't gotten below that moving average, really a close on the VIX below that average. So, you know, that, that could be also uh, some support for, the, for this uh, breakout move right now. And there's also resistance at the all-time high level that uh, just ahead, I don't know if that's going to be significant or not, but it's something we should expect some kind of stalling there. Right. And I have to say, you know, when we look at some of these um, indexes, especially the NASDAQ, let's put that one up here. You know, we're, we, we beat those all time highs long ago. It really wasn't, I mean, you can see when it did do that, it really wasn't, um, you know, there weren't a lot of starts and stops to get it to go through there. Uh, I, I suspect if we start to see that broken on the S&P 500, that problem, I think that'll attract some investors in if they haven't gotten in already. And there's our OEX chart, which I just said, we had that new PMO buy signal that showed up here. You can see That's it very clearly high. in the thumbnail. That's a new all-time high. It, it is indeed. So we're starting to see some some definite strength out there. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people talking about it uh, being in uh, conjunction with, with earnings. And I don't know, Dad, I haven't really seen any earnings that are just eye-popping. I think that uh, my sense is that, you know, they're not as bad as, as everybody thought they would be, but ultimately they're still not good. Well, some of the big techs came in with, some, with good numbers 
And uh, you know, that's easy to do because they underestimate. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I would suspect so. Yeah. All right, so here's the uh, Dow Jones. You can see it's it's real. It hasn't even come up to even try to to get through that gap resistance. But we got this nice upside breakout. Uh, I like the look of industrials right now. I think this might be the next area to pay attention to. All right, I was going to show. Let's see the. Uh, I think I'll look at the STOs, our Swinland trading oscillators, and then I wanted to show uh, the percent stocks above their 20 and 50. Actually, I'll start there. And this was one of the charts that really is, uh, as far as negative divergences go, is, is really a concern for me. And I think it's easier to, to really visualize it in that thumbnail. When you look at these rising top, you know, the rising tops, this much higher high, and then look at the support behind it, it's actually on decline. And you know, you've got stocks with the prices above their 20 at 75%, three quarters, that's not too bad. And same with the 50. But you know, when you're seeing a move to this uh, with that kind of strength to the upside, I would certainly not wanna see declining tops right now on these indicators. But I will caveat that if we can get, you know, if this starts to grow before it turns over uh, and we can get it past the, the top here and the top right here for this one, um, that would negate the the negative divergence. So the divergence is much more visible on the, the whole chart. Mm -hmm. See, uh, yeah, right. In, a lot of divergence between that uh, June top and uh, and the current top. And right in there. Here, so they're diverging quite sharply, actually. Yes. And then I was looking at our uh, Swinland trading oscillators and yesterday, uh, let me add the thumbnail on this so I can show you a little more closely. I noticed that we did get um, a move to the, uh, we've been seeing that Swinland trading oscillators moving higher, but we also started to get positive readings yesterday, which uh, I thought was was great to see. Obviously, I'm still concerned though when I looked at those negative divergences. Right now, they're, they're a little bit mixed, but they're still on the positive side. Uh, so in the short term, I mean, that could uh, be an expression of a possible uh, continuation up to those all-time highs. It's, it's in, the STOs are ba both uh, basically close to being oversold at that level. But still, what bothers me is the tops, you know, the, the divergence on those tops, you know, in July mm -hmm. and then the current top. It's just, it, you know, this, you know, watch out, folks. This is just not a healthy, healthy setup. Right. I, I have the, a visualization of thin ice. All right, so those were the ones that I really wanted to take a peek at. Uh, I'm going to pass the screen over to you, and I know you wanted to talk a little bit about gold, but I don't know if there are other charts you were interested in showing. There are, actually. Excellent. <laughs> I had a feeling. The first one is uh, Apple. <laughs> oh, yes. Keep looking at this. I mean, it's, it's just going, you know, straight up. It's going straight up, and and it's just this this cannot last. <laughs> I mean, it's this is a it, there's going to be a correction. Maybe it won't be all Apple all by itself, but you know when 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 there's a uh, the mal the market has some hesitation or rotation, we have a very good chance of getting back to something here. I don't think you know. Uh, Many times you see parabolics, they'll go right back to a baseline. When else that that is nothing when I, you know, I don't see anything like that for for Apple. Of course, it's just much too stable a company. But it's getting a, well, it's got a, a PE of thirty five. It's just way way overvalued at this point. Mm -hmm. And you know when this this is one of those stocks that pretty much leads the market. You know the Fang stocks in general and. You know, if Apple does start to falter or or fail, uh, that certainly will be some downside pressure for the market as a whole. Well, yeah, and, and cap weighted 
indexes. It is the market pretty much. Yes, yeah, true. <laughs> okay, let's, I wanted to talk about gold. I was, uh, first of all, noticed that we're getting an increasing uh, acceleration on the um, rising trend lines, basically going into a parabolic. Um, so I'm not concerned so much. I mean, that should bring about some kind of a correction, consolidation, but sentiment is not, uh, it's still slightly bearish. And uh, I, I just don't see gold taking a great big correction with some of being so bad at this point. Um, right. The, the some of being Sprott Physical Gold Trust is this closed in fund that owns gold. And uh, the, but the, it trades like a stock on the exchange. So the price of the, of the, uh, ETF it depends on the bid and bid and ask uh, of the traders, but the uh, the assets are, are separately valued, so you can s s sell the uh, ETF at a premium or a discount. Right, and we're still seeing those discounts. It's. Um... You know, one of the things we talked about, I don't know if it was last week or just the two of us talking, was, you know, seeing that that bearish sentiment really uh, narrows it down to more of the investor themselves. Those investors out there are just not um, biting. But it's crazy to me because I know you agreed that all of the, you know, pretty much all our brethren in the analysis area, and if you look at the business channels right now, everybody is still really bullish on gold, but somehow uh, investors just don't seem to be. Maybe they're worried about uh, getting in too high. Certainly, by this indication, no, they're not paying any attention to it yet. I wanted to, <coughs> there's another fund, Central Fund of Canada, that also is a, is a closed in fund, and, uh, but it has, Assets. Well, look at look at the difference in the in this case the discount back in uh, 2015 uh, down here 12 and a half percent discount. That means you're getting access to that gold at a huge huge discount. Yes. And uh, they only saw it like that on TV gas commercials. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, but. The reason it, I, it just suddenly dawned on me, the reason that there is this the disparity between these two funds is the Central Fund of Canada has silver as well as gold. They have about 45 ounces of silver per one ounce of gold. So it's kind of a 50-50 in terms of uh, dollar value. But uh, I, while, while I'm thinking about it, I, on Pond Stars, one uh, show they had, a guy came in and he had $100,000 worth of silver he wanted to sell. <laughs> and uh, it was on a pallet. And it was, you know, they're the stacked about three feet wide, three feet tall, three feet deep. Oh my gosh. I mean, for 100000 Now, the same amount of gold, well, today you could, would, you could match that with 50 gold coins, 50 ounce, 50 <laughs> ounce coins. So, um, it, you know, if you're planning to load up on precious metals, it's probably better to go with the gold. But anyhow, so that's, that's what you see here. Now, notice another thing here. You've got great disparity between silver and gold and how, it, how they move. Uh, in the back here in uh, 2010, 2011, silver went from this level here at 187%. This is uh, gold only went 82%. Over here, we've got 132 versus 
94. So gold obviously thrashes around a lot more. That's just interesting. Silver hasn't made, hasn't equaled the uh, previous uh, high back here. Yeah, somebody was uh, asking me about the fact that it had finally broken from kind of a, a you know, how many year base here, six, seven year base. Yeah, it's, silver, it, yeah. it's been, yeah, here's the basin pattern you can see. And it finally has broken out of that. Might be some more upside there. I think so, yeah. But um, so anyway, in, in, as far as buying at a discount, it um, it's not a discount that you really realize unless they decide, so you got in here and they decided, well, the discounts are great. We're just going to dissolve the, the fund and pay everybody out in the value of, of, of the actual gold because uh, when they liquidate, that it'll, it'll go for the actual price, not a discount. So you, you will have bought in uh, at a, a discount. But I'm probably spending more time on that <laughs> Good, because it's probably not going to happen. But once right. again, if you look at this history, I've got a longer history here. I wanted to finally make my point. It can be pretty wild in terms of discount and premium. And uh, we're nowhere near coming you know, anywhere near that right now. So I think it's going to have to get a lot more exciting. People are going to have to really catch on that, oh, this, something's happening. And we're going to maybe see you know, up in this area, it was maybe start sweat a little bit if, if you're long gold, but uh, a little so, history for you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Um, let's see. Shall we move on to? Did you have any others you wanted to show before? I no, I didn't. Uh -uh. Okay. No. All right. I'm going to grab it. We can talk about industrials. All right. And, you know, I showed the, the Dow chart. I'll just bring it up really quickly again. Uh, and, and really, I mean, the Dow certainly was the big winner today as far as percent gain, uh, at almost 1.4%. Uh, but looking at that nice breakout, I like that out of this uh, continuation pattern, which is that symmetrical triangle. We're getting that upside breakout. But in the thumbnail, you can also see we broke out above these shorter term tops. So I was looking at XLI and I will pull that one up and uh, in prep for doing my diamonds um, tomorrow, but I, I thought I would look at the industrials because that's where I wanted to pull my diamond from the week because I think this is the area that we're gonna start seeing uh, some more growth. So <clears throat> certainly precious metals, I, I love those. I think that that's uh, certainly a place to consider. Um, gold miners, I think, are, are certainly uh, a good place to be. I'm getting ready to jump back into them because I got stopped out on the pullback. Uh, but here you, can, here you can see that breakout on XLI right here coming, uh, that short-term breakout. Now, of course, we have overhead resistance, you know, really close. Um, but uh, if we follow through as the, the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, if we start getting that, that uh, move to the upside, if we can get the momentum going, you can see that buy signal that actually came in today. I don't know why I didn't get uh, notice of that today, but um, it does look like uh, XLI did get us that PMO buy signal as well. So that's, I think that things are looking pretty good. You've got some really nice support here as far as um, the silver cross and the golden cross. So this tells you how many have their 20 day EMA above their 50. And this one tells you how many have their 50 day over their 200 day EMA. And you've got these others. We looked at the percent of stocks with their prices above their 20, 50 and 200 for the S&P when we, we looked at that at first. And now we can look at the same for the Dow Jones, and, or I'm sorry, for XLI. And you can see we're moving up nicely as price has started to take off. We're getting that participation right here. So I, I'm liking this sector. Uh, I think this might be uh, the next place to start looking for diamonds. 
And so that's exactly what I did. Of course, let me go find the one I had. It is going to be TDY. No, that wasn't, yes, TDY. Uh, and actually, I think I have a better chart for it. So let me grab this. Uh, this was one that was uh, my, in my diamonds uh, yesterday. I'm gonna make this really big for you. There we go. Uh, so I was looking at this one yesterday and I thought the, that the setup was looking really good. I think we are getting in maybe early on a double bottom formation. You can see that the OBV is starting to confirm right here with those rising bottoms. There you are. We've got the PMO. It came down, it whipsawed into a cell, but right back to that buy signal and it is starting to head up. We're not in positive territory yet <clears throat> for the PMO but we did see the RSI start to move back into part positive territory. So today seeing that price close not only above the 20 like we saw yesterday, but above the 50 and the 200, I thought that uh, this one looked particularly interesting. And yes, it was up 2.4% today, um, but with that breakout above the 200 day EMA, I, I do think that there's still a lot more upside potential here. So this one is going to be, my diamond of the week for the decision point show. So you can uh, take a look at that. And uh, I give in a stop area here down toward this low, and that would be about a 9% stop. So uh, a, everybody has a different tolerance for risk level, how tight they like their stops, but I always like to put in my diamonds reports kind of a stop zone if you will. So in this case, a 9% stop is probably um, one of, probably optimum, just because that would mean a breakdown below this uh, area of support, and we really wouldn't want to see that. Um, but if you're a little less uh, on the risk side, you could certainly bring it up to be closer to this low right here. So I also recommend that, you know, these diamonds, they'll, they'll come out and they, a lot of them are doing, they do really well, but keep an eye on them because the very next day, you want to look at those intraday charts. You want to make sure that it's behaving correctly, if you will. So that is the decision point diamond of the week. And I thought that since we do have, it looks like about an extra minute or so here. Let's go ahead and let's revisit UNG, Dad. I know we both talked about this one quite a bit. Um, I wrote about it in Chart Watchers about uh, two weeks ago, I think, um, and, and you did as well. And I just, honestly, I just think this chart keeps getting better. I don't know about you, but I, I really like the way this one is behaving. We're starting to get a little bit overbought here. Um, but we were talking, I talked about UNG, I believe I presented that as a diamond back here on this big decline um, that came in. I, uh, yeah, I think it was right here after that big decline. And I said, this is probably a pretty good entry because I liked it to begin with. I had already gotten into it. Um, I had to ride that downside move, but but my subscribers, I said, you won't have to do that, hopefully. Well, of course, we got the big burst and then pulled right back down below that 20-day EMA. But uh, ultimately, big gap up on Monday. Uh, I'm certainly liking it, and I think a lot of my Diamond subscribers are, are liking it as well. What, what do you see as far as the, the upside here, potential here? I mean, sky's the limit. I think we're out of time. Oh, yeah, we've got about 20 seconds. So Okay. Uh no, I like the I like the looks of that chart, and I think it's developing very nicely. Yep, twenty is about ready to cross over that fifty. So, all right, well that does it for us for our decision point show. Uh, really glad you joined us. Be sure and tune in on Monday evening, seven p.m. Eastern. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.